Hey, how are we doing tonight? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is our monthly director meeting. And um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of soaked because it's my first one. It's my first one because it's, it's the first one as a star director. So, all right. <laughs> so welcome to this training. This is something that we uh, will be doing every single month and we've got our chat, but um, like I asked you guys, if it was better do it in the beginning of the month, middle of the month, end of the month, and consensus was beginning of the month. So I, actually think that that is um, really, really good uh, for a lot of different reasons, but first and foremost, because it kind of helps you set up your tone for the month as a leader. All right, so you guys are directors. Welcome, 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 welcome. I hope that it's starting to sink in that you are a director with Sensi, um, and I know that this is not the end of your journey, but truly just the beginning. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in here because I don't want to take too much time um, on this on this one today, simply because um, I also don't want to overload you guys. I know that you've got a lot going on. So it's a busy, busy month, right? Hello, it's September in 2020. Things are happening. Okay, so let's start it off by talking about, um, we had our initial director call with Tracy DeMaria. So if you haven't yet watched that, be sure that you go back and watch that because last night we did cover um, the basic FAQs, right, of, okay, I'm a director, now what, right? So that's been covered. So make sure if you need to rewatch, um, if you didn't get to it, go back and watch that because it's got a lot of important information on it that we shared there. So I'm gonna kind of piggyback off of that and really kind of dive into uh, being a director with Sensi and what that looks like and how you can continue to really build from this, right? Continuing that journey. So we're going to start off with balance. Now, this is something that even now, as I am now a star director, right, I am really finding my balance in the waters, so to speak, right? So things change when you promote to that new rank in your business. And they should change because responsibilities somewhat change, right? Well, maybe not somewhat, but they really kind of do. Anyway. All right, so you need to be planning your week. Now, these are, of course, my suggestions, I will tell you. Um, I really, really blossomed when I promoted to director, and I navigated those waters and really kind of made my own bed, so to speak, right? Because I needed to find how being a director was going to look for me and and what that kind of boiled into um i actually started when i promoted to director um, i stayed on at my corporate job with uh, my company that i've been with for 15 years i stayed on there until december um, it was what like two weeks before christmas and they uh, we're making some changes with mid-management level, and that included me. So I had a couple options. Um, I had seniority with my company, so I could take um, take my severance package and retire early, uh, or I could find another position within the health system, continue to work, um, or just leave altogether and go find something else, right? Um, and kind of see where I landed. And so of course that was a big decision from myself and Justin and we talked it over. And so officially in January of that year, um, 
yeah, 2019, I, I officially retired. And actually it was, it was like before Christmas, technically, like after like Thanksgiving, I was pretty much done um, because I had vacation time and all of that. So um, I kind of ended that even a little bit earlier. And then I jumped right into being a director full time. And I will tell you that you guys may or may not find yourselves in that same situation, right? You still may have the full-time job. So balance is going to be key at this point for you, okay? Because when you promote, as you have to director, I want you to aim for being paid a title consistently every single month, no more, no less. Well, maybe more. Okay, go aim for more. Yes, please. Uh, but no less, right? <laughs> um, and it can be a slippery slope. And, and we've kind of dove into that a little bit in our chat, right? Because director is truly the only title that you can lose. Okay? And rank, rather. You want to be sure that we've taken all of the lessons that we've learned along the way in our Sensi journey and we continue that, right? We continue that. And one of those big lessons that we've learned that you guys have really grown with is building that strong, wide foundation. So when you promote to director, that doesn't mean, oh, I can just sit back and relax and everything's all cool now, right? No, we do not sit back and chill. We are continuing to grow. We are continuing to work our businesses, to build our teams, to really solidify the foundation that we're standing on, okay? So this is not a time to sit back and relax. This is a time to literally shift into the next gear and you have to shift into the next gear. So finding your balance of whether that be a full-time or part-time job, whatever it is that you have, and your Sensi job, because it is your job, right? You really have to find that balance. And you guys, it's gonna look completely different for every single one of you, for, for me, for you, for, for everybody, right? It looks different because we all don't live the same lives. We all don't work the same schedules. We don't have the same uh, family or dynamics or what have you, right? Everything going on. We just don't. Um, so when we're talking about balance, I'm going to kind of really dig deep into what has worked for me. So I want you to take from this, as with any other training, right? I want you to take this and I want this to inspire you to take some of these things and if it's gonna fit into your box of your business, then that's where you need to put it and then you need to let it grow, right? We're gonna, we're gonna water that, we're gonna let it grow. What I have found when it comes to balance is truly, I'm a planner, I think, I think you know this by now, right? Planning your week. Planning your week is a big, big thing, especially if you're also working another job, right? Hello. Um, what I personally do, so what I'm recommending, is to designate at least one day a week that you are spending some time planning for the upcoming week, okay? It's easier to plan forward than it is to plan backward, right? Same reason I think it was a very smart choice that the conclusion was made to do this meeting towards the beginning of every single month, right? So we can kind of set the standard, set the tone for what's going to go on, right? So we can kind of jump along with that. Now, I want you to stick with the plan, right? You're going to plan out your week, okay? We're going to dive in a little bit deeper on planning and what that really looks like in your business, but I want you to stick to it as much as you can. That doesn't mean that it is set in stone. So if you need to tweak it, if things need to adjust, if you're not feeling well, hello, I'm, I'm, I've got my own chronic pain, right? So there are days where I am not at 100%. And so I may have to adjust. I may need to move some things around. I may need a little bit of wiggle room. So always just keep that in mind that you're the boss, right? Just like you always have been in your business, you are the one who calls the shots. Now, when you are a director, 
things are going to look a little bit different and you definitely be want to be making sure that you are sticking to what you've committed to and if for whatever reason you cannot make that commitment that you are rescheduling it you're acknowledging it you're not just letting it float on by okay because your team needs to be able to rely on you they need to be able to rely on you and you have to be able to find that balance and make your plan so plan and and this is another big thing that i'm going to talk about a lot as we go through this and we continue to grow is i want you to plan around your life not the other way around i don't want you to plan your life around your business okay for example, main reason that I'm recording this right now, okay? You need to be able to run your life as needed and then put your sensi business into that. So what that means, what that really looks like is, uh, do you have, you know, working hours at the J-O-B that you have to be at? Do you have the kids from this time to this time and you're like there's no way i'm going to be able to do trainings or anything else like that during these times right or on these days whatever that is um if there's other responsibilities that you have going on right you want to really plan that out really plan that out and i, I want you to make sure that this is really hitting home because at the end of the day i know that you guys are in this because you are doing this one of the main reasons of your why of why you have climbed into this position with sensi is that you are doing this for your family your spouse your family the ones that you love right so we don't put them on the back burner that's not what this means this means that now we're doing we're living we're living our life by design right we've designed our life to be able to say, I want a business that works around my schedule, right? When I have my kids or when I have errands to run or when I have to go to another job, right? I need something that is going to fit and really make a solid fit around me. So don't forget that. It's, it's big. It's big. And I have seen uh, fellow directors in the past kind of let that get away from them, right? Where they're like, oh, I can't, I can't go, um, you know, on, on a weekend to go see my grandparents because we're doing this big sensei thing and blah, 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 blah. Y'all, this is, this is the reason why we're working this business specifically. So we can live our life by our design. So we can do the things that we want and choose to do. So do that. So the first thing when you're planning out your week is I want you to write down any or block out any time that you need to that is going to be dedicated specifically to family obligations or other things that you have obligations, responsibilities to do. And then fill in how you're going to work your sensi business. Words of wisdom. Okay. Your business versus your team. This is another struggle that I see a lot of directors kind of fall into the hole with. You have to keep in mind that your business and your team need equal attention. They do. Again, because you are a director, that does not mean that you now sit back and chill and watch Netflix all day or every single night because you're like, huh, I'm a director now. I don't gotta do that hustle anymore. Yeah, you do. And in fact, again, that's when we are putting it into the next gear. I think I'm still here. Okay. Um, I think somebody else is trying to sign in. I think we're still good. Okay, I'm gonna continue. Um, so again, your business and your team, both are equally important. You are both equally important. That it doesn't mean that one is greater than the other, okay? It does not mean that 
um, you put your business on the back burner and now you just focus on training your team and making sure that your team is hitting numbers and doing the things that they need to do. No, 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 no. You still need to be working your business, working your sales, working on sponsoring new team members, right? Because again, building that solid foundation or building that solid foundation, that never stops. So don't ever get out of the mindset that you stop building that foundation. That continues forever and ever, amen, right? Okay, planning is key, and it is very easy to put one before the other. So try to really, especially when you're in that planning phase, I want you to really think about that. How is your business going to work along with working with your team? A lot of leaders, including myself, I have kind of um, taken that from, um, I know personally from Chloe Cox is kind of where I got it from. Um, and that was the first two weeks of the month is focused on my business and where I'm at. Some months I find that I only need like the first week and I kind of got everything straightened out in my business and I got everything set up. Um, but it doesn't mean that I take my eye off the ball, right? So I'm still focused on my business, but that means it kind of maybe eases up some more extra time or maybe if I need to, or if we've got people who really need help, that I can kind of fill that in and maybe add in some coaching or some extra trainings or do whatever needs to be done. Does that make sense? So again, adjusting as needed. You're always adjusting as needed. Remember, you are the boss. You are the one who is creating this. Um, but you cannot put one before the other, okay? Plain and simple. Um, another piece of this is that help is always there, okay? You are not on an island. You're not, although I will say I've felt that way for a long time. But myself and Tracy, um, we are here to support you in any way possible. Whatever that looks like, we are here. And I can tell you on Tracy's behalf as well that that is why we do what we do. That's just how we're built, is to help support others, okay? So when you need that, all you have to do is reach up and ask. That's all you have to do. It can be in the chat, it can be a text, it can be a message, it can be a whatever it looks like, right? Just let us know, how can we help? Are you feeling like you're drowning? Are you feeling like you don't have a good handle on things? Is it just a bad week? Do you have something personal going on? Are you sick? Are, do you have right, right life, okay? Hello, that's what we're here for, so help each other out. So you have that. And we're pretty darn lucky because within the Scented Bliss group, you are surrounded by a whole group of directors too, who are, of course, going through all of this along with you. And trust me, if you are building those connections, then it's gonna pay off in spades because these are the people that are gonna be there for you when you need it. And you can reciprocate that as well. Now let's talk about leadership. Leadership, right, you're a director, but all this time you guys have been leaders. So this shouldn't be like a whole new, brand new concept to you, okay? Leadership has truly not changed, but maybe the things that you do when it comes to leadership has changed. That's the piece that changes, right? So. Most of you, I can tell you because I know you, you are leading from the front and that is exactly what you need to be doing all the time. Now, your team, as their director, they're gonna take their cues from you. So that means if you are showing up to trainings, hello, our Sunday happy hours, right? If you're showing up to those, if you're showing up to the Tuesday trainings with myself that I do live, right? If you're showing up to these things that we put together, the projects and the training courses that we do right now, we've got our fall into or fall forward program happening right now, right? So we really need to be showing up because we are showing our team that it's important to show up to these things, right? And if they see you working your business just as hard as you were before you promoted to director, trust me, again, they're going to be taking those cues from you. Show up to grow up. I don't know a better way to say it. You have to show up to go up in your business. Showing up in all aspects. Again, 
Now, does that mean that you have to, again, put your life on hold to make sure you get on that training call? No, but do you make it a point to tell your team, you know what, I couldn't do that, we were having a family dinner, or I had this going on, or I had to be at work at this time, right? But I'm gonna make sure to go back and rewatch that. Are you guys gonna go back and watch that if you missed it? Or those of you who did watch it, what do you have? What are your takeaways from it, right? You want to let them know that you are involved in the trainings that are happening. And that may even include your own trainings that you're doing. Because trust me, I can tell you that there's gonna be a lot of times that you're gonna do trainings that nobody's gonna be able to come to. You still do the training. Yeah, even if nobody shows up, you still do the training. You still show up for it, why? Because they're gonna watch your cues. And if they still see you showing up, even though nobody else is, they're gonna be like, well, that's what you do, right? I don't know another way to do it. That's just what you do. And communication is key. So posting in your team page is going to play a major role um, and it's going to help you keep connected. Um, I really also want you guys to begin, if you haven't already, set up some type of a training schedule with your team. You guys know that every single Tuesday I'm there doing my Tuesday training. I don't care if it's Tuesday as well for you. I don't care if it's once a month that you do it, but you need to be showing up and you need to be sharing what is working for you and sharing how you are getting your business to the level that it's at. Because knowledge is power, right? And if we're not sharing the knowledge, if we're keeping all the knowledge inside, then what, I mean, what are we even here for, honestly? Again, there's room for all of us to be in leadership roles within Sensi and for all of us to be superstar directors within Sensi. There is room. So there is absolutely no reason that you should not be sharing knowledge or sharing what is working for you. Just no reason. Coaching. Oh my good news. This is, I tell you, coaching is what truly turned my business around. This is what made the difference for me and my business. Um, it was something that I had to make sure that I was putting intention towards. Now, you have to define your own style. I obviously do coaching calls, okay? Now, I do have some team members who they just are not, they don't like the whole coaching call thing, right? And that's okay. That's okay because just because it's my style doesn't mean it has to be their style, right? Again, our businesses do not have to look the same. So if it doesn't work for them, that's okay. It may look like text back and forth. It may look like a chat that you set up with somebody. It may look like um, a group chat. It may look like the Marco Polo where you do video chats back and forth, right? Um, whatever it is, whatever it is. That's what you really just need to define is your style of coaching. The whole point around this is though, you have to be coaching. You have to. I'm telling you right now, you have to. Just make sure that you're doing it in whatever it is that is the way that works for you. So whether it's in a group, whether it's like taking all your certified consultants on your team and, and coaching them together, maybe that's what they like to do. Maybe that's what works for you and your team. Or maybe it's, you know, taking, you know, these four people who want like that one-on-one -on -one coaching and then everybody else kind of goes into a chat, whatever, right? Again, whatever floats your boat, just be sure that you're coaching because your directors, um, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. Coaching is all about them. It has absolutely nothing to do with you. Nothing. Now, does that mean that you do nothing when you're coaching? Of course not. No, come on. Okay. So the whole point is though, is that you just need to be there for them because, and I will tell you, there are some team members who just want to talk. They just want to talk. And that is what helps them kind of like brain dump everything out, okay? I talk about brain dumping a lot. I hope that you guys 
kind of understand what I mean when I talk about it like that. Because for me, obviously I'm digital planning, but it can be on a piece of paper. It can be, you know, on, on the back of a napkin. I don't care what it looks like. It can be on a phone call to somebody, right? But the whole point is just getting those thoughts out there, right? Writing it down, talking it out, whatever it is, just talking it through can sometimes be the best way for you to be able to process or to learn or to grow or to figure out a new way or to just solidify what it is that you're doing is actually doing it the right way, right? So sometimes that's what we have to do. And so when you're doing coaching, again, whatever it looks like, whether it's in a group chat, whether it's a one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a video, whether it's a FaceTime, I don't care, meeting at the coffee shop, just make sure that you are allowing them to lead those conversations. Now, does this mean that I walk into a coaching call blind? No, absolutely not. You guys know that I style, um, again, just something else that I've gotten from Chloe Cox. I mean, she's amazing, right? She's She's a true uh, rock star when it comes to this business, but being able to create my own coaching forms, putting some accountability into the hands of my team members, and then doing my own homework before that coaching call, right? So I know what it is they want to focus on, okay? Because I make them actually complete that form. Okay, so they've got to complete the form and tell me what it is that they're wanting help with. They also have to tell me what they've been doing. They have to make sure that they are showing me that they're at least dialed in, that they know what their PRV and their GWV has been for last month and what it is currently, where they're at when it comes to sponsoring, what they're doing to help their own team members, right? They have to know all of those things. And of course, I don't show up blind to a coaching call. So the day before, I always look at the way that I do it, right? I'm planning everything out so I know when my coaching calls are going to happen. And then what I do is I actually just screenshot my Google form. I put it into my coaching tab of my iPad, of my planner, right? And so when I'm on the phone with them, I have the form right there. Okay, I have it. So I can do a coaching call from wherever I am. Even if that means on a bad day that I'm, I'm having a really bad chronic pain day and I'm in bed, then that means that's where the coaching call is gonna happen. I don't have to run around the house looking for my notebooks, doing all the things. I got everything I need right here on my iPad, right? And I'm taking notes as well. In my iPad, in the planner that I have, what I do is every single person gets a page and then multiple pages, you know, as we have those different coaching calls along the time. But again, it's something that I can reference to and have in mind. Now, just because I've prepared for it and I know what I want to help them with, right, with whatever it is that they're struggling with, I still let them talk and lead the conversation. I'm listening. I'm putting my ears on. Remember? Okay. We're putting our ears on. Because again, some people maybe just need to talk it out. And if that's what they need, if that's what they need from you as their director, as their leader, as their coach, then that's what you need to be. You have to form to what they need. That may be what it is. So I listen. And I know now, right, because after you start talking to people, after you start having these coaching sessions, whatever they look like, you will start to realize whatever or however it is that they kind of work, right? You'll know that they just like to kind of brain dump it out and, and you can kind of give them feedback on certain things, right? And go from there, right? Others may be like, okay, tell me what I'm doing wrong. And that's where you can fill in, right? Okay, so again, so you have to walk in being prepared, that you have to figure out what's working for them and you really have to listen to them and then give them feedback because that's really what the coaching call is all about. All right, leadership, uh, or systems, sorry. Systems, okay, systems. Love me some systems. Evaluate often. Now, in your business, you, you are not a brand new consultant. Shocking, I know, you're a director, right? So you have systems, and if you haven't really defined them as a system, then you are now. So you should have a system for what do you do when someone joins your team? What do you do when you sponsor someone? 
what do you do when you have a reinstatement? Sorry, I had a total mind blank. <laughs> uh, what do you do when someone reinstates their account? How is that different from a brand new team member? Okay, what do you do when someone promotes? These are things that you need to have in place. These are systems that you really need to define. So as a leader, it's very important to always not only have the systems, but you need to be refining them and tweaking them as you go along. Here's the deal, guys. We have to pivot. We have to pivot. Because let me tell you that where you're at today as a director is going to look completely different from where you're at in six months, whether you're still a director or whether you've now promoted to being a star director or now you're a superstar director, right? Wherever you are, everything is going to grow along with you, along with your business, along with you as a leader and your style of leadership, right? So always be tweaking, always be refining. Every single month, what I do, again, as I'm kind of plotting out the whole, whole month before it begins, right, is sitting down and really looking at all of my systems. What do I need to change or what is working or what doesn't seem to be working that I can tweak a little bit or do a little bit differently, right? Little things even can really sometimes make the big difference. The whole point is that you have to grow, learn, and feed the culture of your team. I talked about culture last night on um, the director call, and culture is a very important part, very important part of your business. And you really have to have a handle on your culture, and you really have to be able to be dialed into that. Because keeping your culture as a whole in a good, positive, and uplifting space is going to make or break your team. True talk. Onboarding, another system that you really just have to evaluate and tweak as you go. Now, as a director, you're onboarding, it's probably going to look a little bit different than maybe it has in the past, right? Because if you know me, um, and uh, hopefully you do, right? But I have a system for onboarding, whether it's somebody that I personally have sponsored or whether or not it's a um, team member who has sponsored somebody or a team member, team member, team members person, right? Who has sponsored somebody, right? Everybody gets that onboarding system from Jackie. So you need to be visual. You need to be present to everybody who joins your team. Everybody who joins. No matter how far down in generation or level that they are, right? If there's somebody, 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 somebody's very first team member, they need to know who you are. You are their upline director. Or star director, superstar director, right? Right now, director, right? So that is where you are. And so they need to know who you are because, guys, guys guys, I don't want to be mean here, but there are some people who just are not ready to be a leader or feel comfortable enough to train or to make themselves available to answer questions. They need to know that they at least have a director that they can come to. This is you. I'm pointing at you. Okay. I don't mean to point, but you know, get, get my point, right? Ha <laughs> ha. Pun intended. Um, you need to be making sure that they know you exist. Hi, I'm your director, right? I'm your upland director. They need to know you because there's going to be times, I can tell you right here and now, there's going to be times that you're going to have people who are just not dialed into Sensi. They don't even know, oh my gosh, we started a new catalog. Wait a minute. We have, we have a Jack Skellington warmer. When did that come out? I had no idea. Trust me, it happens. You need to be sure that every team member hears from you when they, at least when they join, at least, right? And then again, as, as they come on, as you're onboarding, as you're welcoming them into your team page, into the Scent 365 page, into the Scent of Bliss family page, right? That you are making sure that they're plugged into those resources because if a chain 
link breaks, then, excuse me, they know where to go when they have a question. Whether it's posting in one of those groups, whether it's sending you an email or giving you a text or a phone call or whatever it is, however it is that you set it up, right? They need to know. And I will tell you how I do mine. I set mine up in a Google form and I have Google forms set up that are for every single situation. This is what somebody gets if they're joining me personally. If I have sponsored them, this is the letter that they get. So again, I'm working from my phone, people. I'm working from my phone and my iPad, but especially from my phone. Okay, so I have Google Forms saved, right? or I've got the app on my phone, right? So everything that I do, if I've updated it on the computer, or on the iPad, or on the phone itself, right, it's going to be saved wherever I go. Maybe I go over to Trace's house and for some reason I forget my phone and my iPad and I'm like, what do I need to do? I got someone who just joined the team or I just sponsored a new team member, right? I can log on to Tracy's computer if I needed to, log into my Google Docs, boom. Now I've got everything that I need right there and then, right? So I have all of these things set up. So all I have to do is go in there, copy and paste, fill in the blanks that I have kind of set in my template and I will share that with you guys in our director chat so you guys can see what those look like. Um, if you haven't yet been seeing them or really been realizing that that's what they were. So I will show those to you, but you need to have that in some form of a system or another. I highly suggest the Google form simply because I know that you ladies right now are mobile and mobile is going to be what is going to save your business and run your business. Um, recognition, again, you need to let your style shine. Shine like the diamond that it is. Okay. Y'all, we have to give into and lean into our strengths. Does that mean that I have the same strength that she does and she does and he does and they do? No, we all have different strengths. We all have different areas that we shine. Maybe you're better in sales than you are in sponsoring. Maybe you're great at both, but you're not very good when it comes to doing a training call or something like that, right? Whatever it is, then that's when, again, reaching up, okay? You can reach up to myself at any time you know this or to Tracy or to any of the other directors that we network with and you can cue them in and then when you're missing those pieces, hello. That's when we're there to help each other and fill in where you need it, okay? But you need to really be shining and really pulling yourself and your personality out. Because again, like no trust factor, those things, yes, it's the same way that it works when it comes when you were trying to connect with somebody on social media, right? Whether they're gonna be your next host, whether they're gonna be your next team member, whether they're gonna be your next rock star in your team. They have to know, like, and trust you to be able to know that they can come to you when they have something. And when you're recognizing people, you guys, titles and ranks should not matter because what you need to be focused on, what you need to be recognizing is yes, the monthly sales, the top 10s, the top 20s, top 50s, whatever it is, right? However big your group is. Those are the things that, yeah, by default, you're probably going to recognize. But at the same time, I want you to take this little golden nugget, nugget away from this, this discussion right here. And that is that you need to be recognizing behaviors that you want duplicated. Recognize behaviors, okay? Is somebody always showing up for those trainings? Give them some recognition, hello. Let your team know that that is what you do if you wanna go, if you wanna show up and go up in this business, you show up for trainings, right? Maybe that is you are making sure that you are active every single month, right? Yay! Look at him, he's been active every single month since he joined. Recognizing those behaviors, because you guys, we have to be able to be recognizing behaviors that we want duplicated, because sponsoring, sales, training, growing a team, promoting, those are the things, those are the things that grow leaders. 
And let me tell you right now, your directors, your frontline director can come from any level. It doesn't have to be your specific frontline that promotes to director. It could be your second generation. And now they've promoted to director because they've out promoted the person that is their sponsor, right? They're now your first or first gen director, sorry. Right? They can come from anywhere. Emma's living proof of that. Okay? She was not my front line. Lisa, proof of that. She was not my front line. She became my front line because those ladies out promoted their sponsors. They were showing up. They were putting in the work. They became my frontline directors. So don't discount other people in your team. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, personal development is essential. You cannot pour from an empty cup. And I know that you've heard that saying probably 150 times in your life, but I want you to hear it yet again. You cannot pour from an empty cup. You have to be pulling into yourself. So for some of you, it may be videos, it may be books, it may be podcasts, it may be networking groups with other directors and brainstorming and things like this, right? Whatever it is that floats your boat, whatever it is that really fires your soul, those are the things that you want to make sure that you are continuing. And you have to make the time for personal development because it doesn't matter when, or how, or how long, or how much you do, it just matters that you are doing it. Because I can tell you, it is quanti quality over quantity. I can watch 20 YouTube videos, but if I'm not really paying attention, I might as well have watched zero YouTube videos. But if I'm dialed in and I watch one 15 minute video on, onboarding new team members and I'm like writing down my notes and I'm really focused in and going, oh my gosh, I could totally do it that way. And what if I also did this and blah, blah, blah. Then that was 15 minutes well spent. Amazing. So it is not necessarily how often, it is just the matter of fact of the quality of the personal development that you're doing. So if you're working outside the home, maybe that means that instead of jamming out to your favorite playlist, which, hello, is not a bad thing at all because that is totally what gets me motivated, but maybe that means for you because you're like, oh man, as soon as I get home, I got this and this and this and this to do and I'm not going to be able to get anything for my own self, right? Because <laughs> then I'm going to be answering team questions later tonight. So maybe that looks like listening to a podcast on your way home in the car. I don't know about you guys, but that, that has definitely worked for me. I know that I've, I've been able to turn on podcasts and just really, really process the information that was given. And maybe that's what, what it is for that moment in time or that month or what have you. But you have to be able to connect with those people as well. So you can watch as many videos as you want, but if you're not connecting with the person who's doing the videos, then hello. Again, it's 15 minutes that just went down the drain. If you don't really connect with the person, same thing with the podcast, same thing with a book, whatever. The whole point is every little bit matters and you have to keep your cup full because let me tell you, as a director, you are going to be pouring into others' cups always. You just are. So you have to make sure that your own cup is filled at all times. Make time for it. Make the time. Make the time. It's important. All right, um, I am going to do um, a training on Project Broadcast, and we are going to talk about how to implement that into your business. So that is going to be our next step. In the meantime, I'm going to encourage you with a little bit of homework. I'm going to have you kind of go through, and I want you to really focus on how you are going to balance your life with being a director and working with your team and your business all at the same time. And I want you to really sit down and think about your leadership style. What does that look like, right? What does that look like? How is it working for you? How do you really convey that in your team page? How are you creating the culture that you want in your team, okay? Then I want you to really focus on your systems. Again, 
as you've promoted to director, as a director, things will look different. So your systems need to change, okay? I will tell you, as your star director, I will never step on your toes. I just won't. Now, will I still welcome everyone who joins the team? Heck yes, I will. But does that mean that I'm gonna be reaching out to all of your people every single month? No. You are a director of your own team. And so, I'm gonna leave that up to you. So you have to now figure out those systems. How are you going to fill that in? Am I here for you? Yes, I am. So if you need me, then you know where to find me. But I'm not gonna jump in and start rowing that boat unless you ask me for help. And I also want you to really think about personal development. Where's it gonna come from? How often are you gonna do it? And really plan that out. Because I'm telling you, it really does make a big difference in how you become a leader. Y'all, this is an amazing time to be a Sensi Consultant and it's an amazing time to be a Sensi Director. I want you guys to fly with your wings wide open and soar as high as you can go. And trust me, I'm gonna be right there alongside you every step of the way. When you need help, I am here. When you need something, when you need advice, when maybe you just need to brain dump yourself, I am here. <laughs> I'm so excited for you guys. I cannot wait to see how everything continues to grow. <sighs> this is gonna be a great end. 2020 may have sucked starting off with, but let's just say we are gonna end this year in a really good way. I'll talk to y'all later.